What is going on, everyone? It's Rob and Johnny. Welcome to episode 44 of the MM Arcade podcast. Rob, you're back, brother. How is everything going? You feeling good after your fight, <laughs> getting back in Australia? Yeah, mate, I am stoked. I am stoked. It is so good to be back, mate. Every time I leave the country, I realize <laughs> just how good we have it here. And yeah, uh, yeah mate, I'm, I'm in a good place. I'm in a really good place. Firstly, before we, we start talking about anything, I want to say, Good job, man. Good job on the episodes. Solo Thank flying, you, like just running this <laughs> shit by yourself while I was occupado. And I appreciate yeah. that. Hope all you fans out there appreciate that. Appreciate the work Johnny put in. But we're back and yeah, let's get into it. Thank you so much, man. That really does mean a lot. And for everyone that was supporting these videos as well while Rob was gone, I really do appreciate it. If you are here, if you are new, please like, subscribe. But Rob, of course, got to ask you about your fight. Got to ask you about everything that took place in Saudi Arabia at UFC mm -hmm. Fight Night. Tell us, man. Tell us about the fight and how you thought it yep. went. Um, yeah. So firstly, Johnny did ask me, hey, you got any anything to say about the, the opponent switch? And I said, I'll get you a video. And I proceeded to not do that. <laughs> so I, I, I'm I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, the, the week was kind of hectic because um that week coming into dubai i was i was training i i looked to train the extra week with there pretty hard yeah and then the opponent shift the way it happens was morning i got up alex brought me aside and goes hey mate chamayev's out of the fight but we're working on it mm. leave it with me and i went to mm. breakfast pretty stressed and then by the end of breakfast he comes to me and goes hey we're fighting this x y and z see you at yeah. training tonight we'll work some things and then that's it so i was working on some things that's during that period is when i said to johnny i'll get the video to him and then i kind of just went <laughs> into a deep study and it's yeah. <laughs> just unwind sort of thing dude like i was yeah. i was just kind of chilling um but yeah the opponent switch was what is what it is you know mm. i want to say thank you to ikram and the ufc and my team for for making sure everything happened because to not have fought would have been atrocious. Uh, I'd flown all the way there. I'd put in mm. all the work and, mate, I was there. You know, I, was, I was invested yeah. into fighting someone. So I'm glad I thank everyone and all the parties involved that the fight happened because that's how I that's how I earned bread for the family. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy that the, the fight happened. And then, yeah, obviously the, the, there's a the fight night in Saudi. And, yep. yeah, let's talk about it. So how do you think, starting off with your fight, of course, like we've we, we got to start off with that. We'll go in some sort of a reverse order, but how did you think your fight went? What were your thoughts? I know mm. there's not much of a fight to try and analyze and you, of course, were in it, mm. but tell us from your perspective how that fight went. Yeah. So firstly, you may have noticed, a, maybe I was a bit more in, and I say it because other people have pointed it out to me in yeah. the interviews I did today, that I yeah. may have been a bit more intense then I have been in maybe the walkout and stuff. You yeah. Know, I feel like a big part of that was because I, f I was finding it very hard to G up because of how late the fight was. Right. So I was waking up like pretty as usual here, so around 8 o'clock in the morning, right? But I, I didn't mm. walk out till about 12 midnight. So – and I tried napping that day, but I couldn't couldn't swing it, you know, <laughs> trying to nap yeah. like as hard. And I was I was really struggling to stay where I needed to, like motivation-wise and, and energy-wise because I'd mm. get tired. So I was like going like this up and down constantly throughout the, the warm-up process. Mm. So when, when we finally got the call to walk, I was just in my own head massively like Ging myself up, just getting my headspace to where it needed to be for the fight. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's may, maybe why I seemed more intense because I was just like really just trying to combat that <laughs> that that fatigue and, and tiredness. Yeah, those photos look mean though. There's the one of you on the bus and then walking out the camera behind you towards the to the to the ring. Those are some sick photos, bro. <laughs> yeah, they're good. I find it funny that that bus one because I remember what I was listening to on the speakers there because I had my speaker there. What was it? I was bel belting Celine Dion, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Just belting it. You know that song that uh, that song like 
That, that's the way it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, is so dude. funny, bro. <laughs> I was belting it. I was I was in a really good like nineties pop mix sort of go. So oh <laughs> it was God. cool. I'll um, never look at that photo the same again. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone will. <laughs> it's <is> great. <laughs> but in terms of the fight, uh, I mentioned in a couple of interviews leading into it as well, mm. is that uh, I'm fortunate that I have a fight soul. Our kind of fight soul that we, we practice at, at the gym is to create a style that we can impose on our opponents so that they yeah. have to deal with what we can bring. So it gives us a kind of flexible approach to fights. So mm. um, and that was my that was my game plan going in. Just make him worry about my fight style and and use my experience to to lead me from there. You know, I I, I said it. I'm sure I'll work it out, and I did. <laughs> you did. Um, you did. And, and, and look, uh, I remember a couple of interviews that you said this, and I don't think you actually meant it as any disrespect or a slight on Ikram, but you hadn't heard of him, and. You clearly, you, you watched a couple of tapes on him since then, but you were just being honest about the situation and not necessarily trying to disrespect him, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, I feel like some of the reporters took it out of context and it came across disrespective. It was by yeah. no means. You know I don't watch a ton of UFC. Yeah, of I've, course. Like I, I try my best to, to stay abroad of it because of uh, our cast, but that's probably the only reason why I do it. Mm. And it's not like he's – like been in the UFC for a long time, right? So no. I don't think it's any stretch to say that like I was, you know, I didn't know who he was. But then yeah. I, I did my research and um, I understood how well-rounded his skill set is yeah. and uh, the challenge he could pose because the fight he had with Chamayev, whilst Chamayev knocked him out, it was competitive until the, until mm -hmm. that moment. Like yeah. It was competitive. Yeah. Um, but anyway, fight starts and I was feeling great, mate. Movement mm. was crisp. I was light on my feet. I was sharp. And uh, I could tell there was a few times every time I, uh, I, I, would, I would faint in or, or yeah. I would jab in or I would, uh, or I would push that gap a little bit, he'd always throw his left hand out. Yeah. Like he, and yeah. I, I picked that up probably in the first minute. I got some hard reads and I saw him overreacting a lot every time I'd dash in because I, I, I do want to stand mm. fast closing that gap. Yeah. So he was he was throwing that hand out a lot. So once I had I had cemented that down, I committed to the the one two over the top, mm. which is kind of why I put that two on the arc to go over the jab, and then yeah, rest is history. Really, it was funny because when I, when I did a I did the recap video um, heading into your fight with him and. I watched a lot of his tape, especially against Hamza Chamayev and his two fights in the UFC. I noticed that as well when he throws that jab, as strong as that jab is, because he's put down people with it. And I think his first fight in the UFC, not Dana White's contender series, but his first fight in the UFC, he put him down hard with that left jab. But when he throws it lazily or just not strong, he has a tendency to leave himself a little bit open. That's exactly how he got knocked out by Hamza Chemaev. In fact, there were there were two or three different occasions in that fight with Hamza where he threw that jab and he left himself a little bit open. So you were reading that in the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, within the first minute, I had I had picked up I picked that up because he did it about three times, and I was yeah. obviously trying to get reads out of him, so I was fainting a lot. And then every time I jab, I'd commit to it and then see what he did. And mm. uh, yeah, within the, within the minute, I kind of got a good tell on what he was doing. I saw a couple of further breakdown videos of that as well. There was one really good one where. I don't think so. People are saying that obviously you, you read him throwing that lead left jab, and that's when you were taking opportunity of coming in. But also, he would raise his left leg as well. Did you notice that in the moment too? Because when you eventually got that right overhand hook, his left leg was up. So it was obviously not fully planted. And that's probably why your punch was even more impactful than otherwise it, it might have would have been. Like, did you notice him raising his left leg in the process? Oh, well, he was tape, he was trying to tape kick me you know, um, yeah. the entire fight. And I've seen in, – in the tape that I've seen him, he uses – he's got a really good tape kick, like yeah. a really good lead tape kick. And um, it's uh, – I, I didn't see him raising his knee when, when I went in. I just know the moment I committed in. And, For um, sure. I parried, I parried his rear hand. You know, you can't see it from the angle of the UFC, but I don't know how someone else got it, but I saw it. Yeah. 
um, I parried the the rear hand with my left hand and then come over the jab with my right whilst drifting mm. left away from missing. Sketchy sometimes, but <laughs> yeah, because you you kind yeah. of drifting into his power hand, but you know it worked to to good effect this time at least. A hundred percent. And then from that moment, what I really noticed is that you didn't just rush straight in. You did come in with the left, right with the overhead kick. And because he was falling after that right, that overhead kick, I think it just grazed him or, or, or missed him. Um, but you were not just rushing in. You were trying to be as careful as possible. Because how many fights have we seen where someone gets wobbled, the other guy will come in and then he'll get caught, even though the other guy is wobbled because that can happen, right? Yeah, you, you got to be measured in that. In that respect, because you also, like I, and again, like I said, I lent on my experience. I, I understood I had heard him, and it's more about picking your shot. It's making sure you you <clears throat> think of it as like once I had wobbled him, I had yeah. the advantage. So my whole goal at that point is to keep the advantage. It's not about mm. finishing or, or anything else. It's about keeping the advantage and that can can look in multiple different ways and i'm glad that it did result in the finish but yeah. that's my main approach when, yeah. when i hurt my opponents i messaged you bro that uppercut was filthy man it was you you, you talk about a perfectly timed beautifully executed uppercut that was it and strangely it very like it was very similar to the one <laughs> of hamza chemaev against against ikram Eliskarov. Both I, of them. I kid you not, in the fight, I had a flash of like seeing that clip with Chamaya. Did you? <laughs> with the no other way. Guy. Yeah, dude. I was going to ask. I remembered it like, I remembered it like, remember watching it and maybe that's why I, I, I like was, I don't, know, I don't know, maybe it played into it a bit, but. That's crazy, yeah, bro. It's, it's weird <laughs> little things like that. Hell yeah. You know? So that was the fight. Obviously, you're stoked afterwards, like. It was such a cool, cool moment for you. What's what's happening next? Like that, and I know you probably don't know yet. You tweeted recently, or you posted on Instagram that, "Hey, more news to come soon." I assume you still don't have that announcement yet, and that's going to be coming in the coming days or weeks yeah. or whatever it might be. Well, it's tricky because um, they said if I want to be a replacement fighter, and I kind of jumped all over it straight away. Yeah, but I totally forgot <laughs> that I I got to finish my root canal, so. Like two so days what happened before, with that man? Yeah, two, two days before the fight, I had a, I developed a bad infection in my jaw, and I had to get, Fuck. I had to get two root canals, um, like two days before I flew out. Yeah, and that's like a three stage process. So I only did the first stage before mm. I left with the other two today and, and Friday, <clears throat> and mate, it hurts so much. Like. <sighs> I'm imagine, talking bro. pain levels like 9.5. That was mm. the worst. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. It was just, it was an absolute nightmare. And I was worried that I was going to have to get the, the, the tooth taken out yeah. to get to the infection and how the hole would heal overseas. You know what I mean? And I didn't want to see a dentist in Brutal. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but it, it all worked out like by about midweek in Dubai when we got there. The, the infection settled down so the pain kind of went away and I was mm. able to pick up training again and, and stuff. So it, it all worked out, but that sucked. But I totally forgot that <laughs> when I said about everything else. Like I, I yeah. got some tooth, teeth work done and stuff like that. But also, you know, once the adrenaline settled down and whatnot, like I'm no one's backup fighter, dude. Like hell yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit in the you know, on the sideline waiting for crumbs. Like mm. when I when I fight either one of those guys, they're gonna that's the fight the UFC is gonna give me, and mm. I'm gonna go hunting. Like that's the they're gonna enter my crosshairs, and mm. you know that's what I'll do. So um, I think I, I like that approach much more than you know definitely like I said before. But I know that you know, you said that you want to take your family on a holiday. You fought two fights pretty close <clears throat> together, um, which obviously it, it puts a toll on your team. It puts a toll on your family. So yeah. is there any intention on your side to try and make it to UFC 305 in Perth in August? Or are you going to be fight. there either way, but whether you're fighting yeah. is a different question. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there, but I'll, I won't be fighting. Um, yeah. I'm probably going to look to fight at the end of the year. Around okay. October, November, December. I'd like to get one more in, especially because yeah. I, I kind of went unscathed. It's um, it's a good time for me to um, 
rest my mind. Fighting yeah. is stressful, like fight week stressful. The fight day itself is very stressful. So I think mm. even though my body's in, in good shape, I think it might be a good it might be good for me just to unwind a little bit from that, like let my nervous yeah. system chill. Because like mm. you said, from February <clears throat> When I fought Costa, it's kind of dragged out into just one long camp. And I know the team as well had to push back a lot of things. Like we had certain guys that could have fought that decided not to because all the coaches are focusing on me with my camp. Right. I know the coaches wanted to go away with their families and they couldn't. And yeah. same with myself. So I think we all deserve a little bit of time off just to mm. just to see where we're at. And then, you know what? October or November, that's not that far away realistically. You no, know, by the time by the time I go away with my family and stuff, I'll be mm. back in camp before I know it. So, yeah, I think just unwinding a little bit for now is uh, and, the play. And are you just kind of you're going to wait and see what happens with Drickers fighting Izzy? Obviously, Sean Strickland is is in the wings, and it seems like he's more willing to wait, and he feels like he's already earned that title shot against whether it's against Izzy, who he's beaten, or Drickers, who he had a close loss to, who many people thought that he won. So. Is your decision like your decision on who to fight or who you think you're going to fight? Obviously, it's dependent on that, but also might be dependent on what Sean thinks because a lot of people, including myself, are saying the obvious fight to make is you against Sean for the title opportunity. But it doesn't feel like Sean wants to do that. Uh, it's tricky, you know. I've never really focused on who I'm going to fight. I really, really, I just make sure I'm in a prime position so that yeah. when the UFC give me a name. No, I can go up there and bash him. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, I, we're all stoked for you. Honestly, <laughs> it was awesome seeing you get that finish. Um, I, I would be remiss though if we moved on from this because many people asked me to ask you, what were with those interview questions in the post-fight press conference? <laughs> Some of those journos, man, the questions that they asked you, like they started leaning that way and then the very last question was just like, Man, if you fought Hamza Chamaev, could have been different. You might have lost. What were with those questions? <laughs> Dude, it's just, they're just stupid questions. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I love them because it allows me to like take the piss a little bit. <laughs> you know? It's kind of like ask stupid questions, get stupid answers. And I find it fun. I feel bad for the fighters that they get flustered with that sort of stuff because, yeah. you know, like do your job better, right? I understand I the reporters is trying to get some hype with like the Russians and everybody else on that side of the world. Bit of bit of hype and, and noise and yada yada yada. But yeah. come on, dude, do your job better. No, I agree. And and like, hold on, it's not you're not the one that pulled out of the fight. I mean, he did for legitimate reasons. Yeah. So it's a weird it's question like to I, ask. Yeah, it's almost like they're making out like I ducked him. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, that's what like, I thought. Oh, I, I just did a twelve week camp to fight the dude. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> and also, what a lot of people didn't know is that you had that surgery and you were very sick as you were flying to to Dubai to eventually head to Saudi Arabia. So yeah, that was at the time when the Hamzat fight was on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it wasn't that bad. Like, I was just a lot of pain, really. Fuck, it hurts I mean, so much. Teeth pain yeah. sucks, dude. Oh, For sucks. sure. That was just, it was so stupid. And you just, you kept laughing and you're like, I don't know, if I had wheels, I'd be a bike. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That didn't translate well. I got no laughs in the crowd then. <laughs> like, it did not translate well. I thought it was well, hilarious. But- yeah, well, I think I think maybe it's an Aussie thing. All the all the Aussies get my humor to a degree. But like it didn't translate because I mean, obviously we had a translator there, so like it didn't, yeah, yeah. didn't translate well. <laughs> but I thought it was funny. D- I, I thought you handled it pretty well. It was a it was a funny clap back. Um, but yeah, man, stoked for you, stoked for your win. Let's see what happens. Like, let's see what happens at USC three or five. Let's see what Sean potentially decides to do. But um, before we move on from that USC fight night in Saudi Arabia. I just wanted to ask you as a general thing, what did you think of the card? Of, of what you saw at least, because of course you were preparing. Mm. Um, but did right. you see any, any of the other fights? Do you have any comments to, about the fights with like Pavlovich and Volkov or any of the other ones? So um, I'm obviously going to touch on these pretty lightly. I'm, yeah. only, I'm only talking from what I saw whilst trying to warm up in the back room. I haven't yep. what, rewatched the whole card. Hmm. Don't intend to. So, so, <laughs> so don't get your hopes up, guys. Yeah. But um, from what I saw, and I do watch a fair bit of them, depending on where, like, where out 
my preparation is like how many fights it is from the main yeah. event. But you know what? I'll start with Odzimir. That was such a cold cut killer knockout, dude. Brutal, like, bro. That dude is – I am the biggest fan of Odzimir, man. Like yeah. <laughs> he is so cool. Like the way <laughs> – he's just cool, dude. He's so stoic and – nonchalant about anything he just yeah. went in there with absolute confidence it's like i like i couldn't i can't help but get the feeling like he's just it was just like he just went to work you know what i mean like yeah he's it's, it's like yeah i don't know how to explain it but like dude just went to work and like that uppercut when johnny was already oh, like brutal on the floor just sent Johnny to the shadow realm, dude. Like, <laughs> I feel so bad for that dude. Every time he gets knocked out, someone said it's like a Looney Tunes <laughs> knockout. I feel really bad, but it's true. <laughs> I hate bringing it up. Have you seen it? <laughs> I'm loving thinking about it. Have you seen when he before before he was in the UFC when he gets knocked out and he, and he stands up? He gets shinned again. He goes full limp, like <laughs> stiff ragdoll. Then gets back up again, like three times. Like it is wild. Now I'm not taking a dig at Johnny Walker. I think no. he is a sensational, outstanding fighter. I think you shouldn't wink at the camera as much as he does. But mm. <laughs> right, that, but that's a personal thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but anyway, he uh, yeah. I thought that was a, a great win for for Odzimir. That was. Classy. It was, it was just a, it was just a, a great win. Yeah. Um, Shara, his fight. I don't know. He's a middleweight, so I'm not going to harp on too much about him. The guy <laughs> he fought, Trasoli, whatever it is, dude was a punching bag. Guy. Yeah. Guy gassed after about 30 seconds, and it might have something to do with. Um, he was supposed to fight Ikram the week before. No, so he he was meant to fight Ikram. He went through the weight cut similar. To, I think both he and Ikram were like either in the middle of their weight cut when they were meant to fight or towards the back end of it. Then obviously that had to stop. And then Ikram signed on to fight you. So he went over. And then they only called Tricoli. I think it was three days before mm. the fight that was like that was meant to happen with, with Shara and whoever his opponent was, which obviously got canceled. So they called him on three days notice to fly over. He arrived at 1 a.m., and had to obviously cut weight. So that dude was spent before the fight even began. So I think that's what contributed to that. Okay. Yeah, because that dude was like gassed from about 30 seconds in. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And um, then he was kind of just a punching bag after mm -hmm. that. So you know, not, not much to say on that fight. Yeah. Kelvin. <sighs> Kelvin, Kelvin, <laughs> Kelvin. What do I say? Like, I like the guy. I really yeah. do. I'm always in his corner, to be honest. Like, I, I really like him, but... You are, yeah. Mate, he did D-Rod dirty. Yeah. Dirty, man. man. Like, for one... Okay, so, firstly, Kelvin always surprises the hell out of me. Dude rocks up... I thought he looked so out of shape and, like, unwell at, mm. at, at face-offs and whatnot, and then, and then he fights like he always does. Like, he's just... Yeah. He's just one of those dudes, but... Mate, the fight was supposed to be at 170. The fight happened at 185. Okay, that is Bro, 15 pounds difference. He couldn't even do a catch weight at 180, which is what D-Rod yeah. asked for. It had to do 185 back in middleweight. Like, yeah. what's the point? Yeah, <sighs> and uh, it's such a hard position. So what's D-Rod going to do? Not take the fight, but that means he doesn't yeah. get paid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he needs this fight. Um, yeah. I don't know. It was, it was dirty by D. Rod. I, like I, it, it I've was, always it kind was of dirty. been. I've always been on the stance that like if you don't make weight, you're kind of like what's wrong with you, right? You know the terms and conditions when you sign the contract twelve weeks before the bout. Yeah. Okay. There were dudes rocking up three days before a fight still making weight. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's how I feel. Still big fan of Kelvin, but that was dog. <laughs> well, it, it absolutely had an impact in the fight, right? When, when you don't, yeah. like they were saying, obviously he, he wasn't eating. I'm sorry, when I talk about Daniel Rodriguez, he was eating like he was cutting weight, preparing for a yeah. 170 fight. So 
that affects how he performs in the fight. K- Kelvin, Mate. he's always had a hard shin, but he was clearly taking the shots easier. Clearly was the bigger guy, especially when the takedowns happen. It affected the performance. And otherwise, we might have seen D-Rod win that fight. Now, apparently, D-Rod, he got a new USC contract from it, a six-fight contract. I think he got 30% of Kelvin's purse. So I think he's been able to negotiate it in his, in his favor, but he still has a loss on his record because of it. I, I personally yeah, think Kelvin like, needs to pick a freaking lane. Are you middleweight or are you welterweight and stick to it? And it's kind of like, how much can I pay you to lose sort of thing, right? Yeah. Um, it's You know what, it, you know what it, it would be like? It's like me saying, hey, D-Rod, I'll fight you at 170. Yeah. And then getting the day off and be like, psych. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 185 yeah. it is, dude. Because <laughs> like, I'm, I'm walking into the octagon at like 210, hmm. you know what I mean? Hmm. Like, so I don't know what Kelvin's walking in at. That's but a I, good point. I know, I, know, I, know, I know welterweights don't get up to 210 in off season. Like I'm oh. walking into the octagon at 210, lean, fit, strong. So he must have been at least like 215 maybe, maybe two closer to 220. Right. 220. That's, two that's insane, bro. Right. I know welterweights yeah. like they try to in off season they try to like who was it Usman said he doesn't get bigger than one ninety and he's a, looks like a big welterweight. Yeah, for sure, for sure, so, absolutely. It had yeah. an impact on the fight. I feel really yep. bad for D Rod. And all things considered, I thought he performed pretty well. But he's finding someone that was clearly heavier and it's didn't have to go through that brutal weight cut, so was able to mm-hmm. take shots easier. That I feel bad for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pavlovich Volkov, that that one I didn't watch. As much because like that was fight before me, so yeah, I was pretty heavy into my warm up at that point. But I saw Volkov yeah. utilizing his range and reach very well. Yeah, so you saw Sergey having trouble closing that gap, and that's kind of how the fight played out. Yeah, in my uh, opinion, from what I saw, it went completely opposite to the way that a lot of us thought it would. And honestly, man, like I don't know what's been happening with Pavlovich. It seems like he really struggles when he was clearly looking for the knockout. He even said that the whole fight, he was just hunting for it and it never happened. And it seems like when it doesn't, he struggles. He His game looks to be pretty one-dimensional in that regard. And I don't know what he does next because he's had two losses now, one, one against Aspinall, which obviously happened in a bit more brutal fashion, one now against Volkov. It's hard to say. It's hard to say what Pavlovich does. And he was someone that we all thought could have easily been the next champion. He was the favorite heading into the Aspinall fight, fight and then he got knocked out. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know what Pavlovich I, does. I think his setups a little bit. I think if he can work on his setups yeah. and just kind of lure his opponents into, into some traps, hmm. you know, and, instead of kind of just um, bullying through it sort of yeah. thing. He's kind yeah. of a bit oonga boonga at the moment. Yeah. Which is fine because dude hits like an absolute truck. <laughs> and I shook his hand, dude. His hand enveloped mine. Like he's a really? big guy. He's a big guy. Uh, like, is he taller than you or is he? Yeah, like, yeah. He's he's tall too. Like he, did, he didn't dude. look super tall because of he was fighting Volkov, but he's tall. And I was going to say because Volkov's freaking massive, but and he made Volkov's Pavlovich huge. look small. <laughs> yeah. But. Far out. But good, good win for Volkov. Honestly, like very interested to see what what he does. Um, the heavyweight divisions are looking very interesting at the moment. We obviously have Aspinall versus Blades soon uh, in Manchester, and obviously Jones is going to be fighting Sergey. Uh, sorry, uh, Miocic at some stage. So let's see what mm-hmm. happens with the heavyweight division. But yep. overall, yep. I thought it was actually a pretty fun fun night. And and for the fights that you saw, what did you think? Yeah, they they, they weren't bad. I thought it was a, it was a good card. I think it was, you know. I, I'm very fortunate to be on, you know, making history, being the the first main event in oh, yeah. Saudi Arabia. So to be able to do that, mm. is, I'm, I'm I'm very privileged to be able to do that. And to I thought there were some good fights, some good fights mm. to have on the first fight, like on a fight night card in yep. Saudi Arabia that was free on ABC as well. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, couldn't have gone better. Yeah, hell yeah. So next up, obviously, like we're turning around very quickly with another UFC card. Are you good? Do you need to go to the bathroom? I, I, I mentally am having I these checks. <laughs> you do? I do. But <laughs> I think I can get through this next bit because maybe. You reckon? All right. Yeah, maybe. Well, you you want to do the USC 303 predictions then? Yep. Yep. And then I'll. All right. Go back. Let's, let's start off. This is a look. I know that there's been changes with this card with the Connor thing. Um, 
But I still think on paper, this is probably a better card than what it was before. We have some banger fights starting off with, and I don't know why this one seems to be going under the radar. We have Ian Machado Gary against Michael Venom Page. So Ian Gary, he's undefeated, 14 wins, no losses. He has wins over Jeff Neal with the split decision, uh, win over Neil Magny, win over Daniel Rod- Rod- Rodriguez, speaking of him with a TKO. That MVP, very new in the UFC, of course. He has that win over uh, Kevin Holland and then everything that he did in Bellator. How do you see this fight playing out? Mate, I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> it's a hard one. Like, whenever, whenever Venom Page is uh, in a fight, because of his yeah. style, it's so hard to predict what happens. I, mm. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see. I don't know what we're going to see. It's a, it's a I, really unpredictable one because, like, Ian Gary, I, I probably would say that Ian Gary, is it sh- he should be the favorite, and I haven't checked the odds. Um, Michael Page is so, he's so bloody quick, though, and he, yep. we saw them in that, in that Kevin Holland fight. He's so awkward and he can hit people out of nowhere. It's, he can close distance so freaking fast. But I'm leaning towards Ian Gary. I think Ian Gary mm. genuinely is the best prospect in that division. I know a lot of people don't like him, but I think he will get it done. Even though Michael Page doesn't seem to be slowing down, Ian is much younger. I I don't know. He seems to be very hungry to win that. I'm going to say Ian Gary. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'll go Gary too. I think we could see him utilizing his wrestling a bit. Yeah. Um, I, I think we see him mixing it up, and I think that leads him like an advantage. I, I would say that's probably one of his best paths to victory. He he can't just stand there and trade with with MVP. But let's see what happens. The next fight, which what did this fight start off as? It started off as for this is my memory. Jamal Hill against Khalil Roundtree. Roundtree has that you know uh, doping thing that happened to him. So it's Jamal Hill against Carlos Ulberg. And then, and then Jamal Hill gets a knee injury, so it's Carlos Ulberg against Anthony Smith, and now it's Anthony Smith against Roman Delize, who's not even at that weight class. He's moving up for the weight. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> like, yeah, that's a- this is the weirdest fight ever. But Anthony yeah. Smith against Roman Delize, who do you reckon, mate? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to say Anthony Smith. Yeah, you have to. Um, yeah, I reckon Anthony Smith by decision. Just yeah. because I'm imagining like a heavy set Delize Del- Del- was kind of heavy and slow <laughs> in a middleweight. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah. I can't imagine him getting faster as a lot heavy, right? So, no. so and look, credit yeah. to him for stepping up in weight on, on pretty short notice, but mm. especially given his loss against Nasadine, and I know that was a it was a majority decision. Um his loss against Marvin Vittori as well. Mm. I don't know how he stacks up against light heavyweight. I really don't. So I'm going to go with Anthony Smith as well. Co-main, Brian Ortega, Diego Lopez. This came out of nowhere after the Conor McGregor and Chandler cancellation. This is going to be a banger. Brian Ortega, 16 wins, three losses. He just had the win against Yair Rodriguez before he obviously lost against Yair due to the shoulder injury. Diego Lopez, he's on a bit of a tear right now. He had a win against Sadiq Youssef, UFC 300. Win against Pat Sabatini. He has a win against uh, Gavin Tucker. So... Diego Lopez, fun, exciting fighter. Brian Ortega uh, fighting him. I think Brian Ortega said that he wants to move up and wait after this fight, which is very interesting. But who do you think wins? You know what? I'm. It's hard to say. Like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean towards Ortega just because of his the experience and because Ortega's been in fights like this before. Okay, yeah. Lopez is obviously riding a real high, super yeah. explosive, aggressive fight. I thought his last win was amazing and it really yeah, highlighted it just how dangerous this guy is at finishing people. But yeah. Ortega is a hard guy to finish. Like he's mm-hmm. one of those guys that is very hard to finish. And if you don't finish him, he kind of takes you into deep waters. So I, mm. that's it's kind of like that's where I see this fight going. Yeah, I, I don't know if Diego Lopez is going to be able to knock Brian Ortega out and. I jet, my my prediction is going to be submission for for Brian Ortega. I think he can get it done. Like to have someone get so close to to choking out Alexander Volkanovsky, right? To to do what he did against Yair Rodriguez with the arm triangle. I think he can do it. And 
maybe put a bit of a, a pause on the hype train for Diego Lopez, but anything can happen in, in this body yep. game. 100%. And finally, the main event, the fight that everyone's now looking forward to, these two guys are stepping up on short notice. Alex Pereira against Yuri Prohaska for the light heavyweight ch- championship. Alex Pereira, 10 wins, 2 losses. He just had the KO win against Jamal Hill, also against, or also at USC 300. He beat Yuri before that with his TKO. He beat Jan Blahovitz uh, before that, but obviously that one was, was much closer decision. And then we have Yuri Prohaska just coming off the win against Alexander Rakic via TKO. 30 wins, 4 losses, though before that he, of course, lost to Pereira, as I mentioned. Rob, this is going to be a very, very fun, interesting fight. Who do you got? I'd be remiss to go against Pereira. Like, yeah. the dude is so consistent, so consistent. Yeah. Now, in their, in their first pairing, I had Yuri because I thought the unorthodox strikes mm. were going to lend itself to great effect against Pereira. And they did yeah. until Pereira knocked <laughs> until- him out. Okay. <laughs> um, I think the same thing. I think Yuri's unorthodox strikes are going to land on Pereira. The thing is, though, Pereira's just consistent. He's so consistent. Yeah. He's such a safe bet. And Pereira, like in the stand-up world, I don't think anyone gets close to him. Dude's fought hurt. Dude's been in deep waters. Like he understands the striking game to such a degree, I think yeah. it's so hard to count him out against anyone if there's going to be striking involved. So, um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to lean towards Pereira just because of how consistent he is, just because of how dangerous he is. Mm. I like Yuri a lot, kind of silently rooting for him because I just like, the dude's wild. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the good he did kind another of one crazy, of his, you know what I mean? He's training uh, in three days in the darkness, no food, just water. He did another one of those for this fight. Yep. Crazy yeah, and, man, and dude. I am all for it, dude. He's a, he's a good <laughs> kind of crazy, but, right? The yeah, good kind. Yeah. Well, I feel so, like Johnny Walker's kind of the other end. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm, I think Pereira would be the favorite, but that's my opinions. Well, when, when this fight was first announced, my first thought instantly went to Pereira knocking him out, only because, like, Yiri is a very fantastic fighter, right? And he showed against Rakic that he still has it. However, if we all recall how that fight actually went, Rakic won the first round. He really did piece up uh, Yuri in the first round. Mm -hmm. And he just can't fight like that against Pereira. He's going to get knocked out. He can't go in with reckless Mm -hmm. abandon because fighting against Rakic is one thing. Fighting against Pereira with his left hook is a completely different ballgame. You've already been knocked out by the dude. You can't just go in guns blazing. And I just have this feeling that that's just how he fights. He's that Czech samurai warrior. And I feel like he's going to go in and maybe at time, we saw that in his in his previous fight with Pereira. He might actually go in, think like he's doing really, really well, getting a lot of punches in, and then Pereira comes out of nowhere with the knockout. I think that's exactly how it's going to go again mm-hmm. in the third round. I'm going to give him another round. That's my opinion. Yeah, I, th- I, think, I think one of Yuri's weaknesses is his leg defense. I think he gets yeah. leg kicked a bit too much in every fight. Mm especially against guys that can leg kick, like in that Rakic fight, we saw it really start to play an effect in that fight. Yep. No one does it better than Pereira. Like His kicks are so good, man. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like I said, I stand by what I said. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think both of us are picking Pereira for this fight. Let us know, of course, what you think in the comments below about mm-hmm. UFC 303 and all the fights taking place this weekend, Saturday, US time, Sunday, our time. Um, Rob? Before we talk about the game that you want to talk about, are you good? No. Be right back. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I have these mental checks now, and it's very funny because before he would bring it up, and now I'm just just triple checking. It makes it easier for me to edit the video as well. Um, I tell you what, though, going back to Rob and, and who he should fight next, I really think Sean Strickland needs to just suck it up and fight Rob. It's the fight to make. They've never fought before. They both have very strong claims um, to be getting a title uh, shot or, a, or at least a title contender's shot. Sean beat Polo, but Rob also beat Polo, right? And Rob's fight against Polo was much more exciting. And then Rob obviously did what he did against, against Ikram, who was the biggest prospect in the division. I think they have to make that fight. I think it has to be Rob versus Sean Strickland because if it's not, 
in all likelihood, if Sean waits, and definitely if Sean waits and, and, and Izzy wins, easy, you're going to put Sean in there. Um, but if that happens, it'll probably be Rob against against Nasser Dean. But it's still going to be a title contender shot. Anyways. All right, bro. It is time. This is, I know I know that you haven't played it yet, but this is something that we've been talking about for, for weeks, if not months now. You're back now in Australia. Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, came out while you were in Dubai, I believe. Um, I know that you haven't got the opportunity to play it. The reviews have been fantastic. Shadow of the Earth Tree, 94 on Open Critic. It is literally the highest rated DLC ever. Ever. I've been playing it. I played it during the review period. I've, I've finished it completely. What Do you have anything, like, kind of thoughts on Shadow of the Earth Tree before we start talking about some of the mixed reviews on Steam? Like, where's your head at with the DLC? I haven't touched it. I am all for it, though. From what I understand, there's a whole bunch more weapons, new spells, yeah. new areas. So yeah. um, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Looking forward yeah. to getting into it. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but as I said, I, I have been playing it. And it's genuinely fantastic. I don't know why they said it's the size of Limgrave. This thing is huge, man. You're, you're talking, if you take your time with it, at least 40 to 60 hours of more content, more weapons, boss fights. The the exploration is so bloody good. The way that they've done, like they've used verticality, they've used depth. There's always a new freaking path to go to. To get to certain areas of the map, you've really got to look for it. It's just fantastic. The biggest slight that people have had against it is performance on PC, and I played PS5, so I'm not too sure about that. But also, people are saying it's too hard, Rob. So there is actually a mixed rating on Steam right now because a lot of people are saying that it's too hard. Now, knowing you playing a lot of FromSoft games and DLC, is that valid to say this is too hard or is this exactly what it's meant to be? If you... (laughs) Brother. (laughs) If you... (laughs) Found the game too hard and you went up onto the Steam page and you wrote a little review going, man, it's too hard. Like, fuck. What? <laughs> Mate, I have absolutely zero respect for you. Like zero. <laughs> None. You don't exist to me. You are you you are as uh, you you are practically the rocks in my garden. You were just part of the scenery. You were part of the foliage. You were nothing to me because you are pathetic. Pathetic. It doesn't make pathetic. any sense, bro. Like this, not only is it a FromSoft DLC and they've always traditionally been hard, but they said from the get-go, this is end game stuff. And they know they have people with overpowered builds, they're over-leveled, whatever it might be. If they're releasing a DLC, they can't make it too easy for people to, to just walk through. It, there has to be a difficulty there. There has it's to be. It's not that. It's not even just that. It's just like you're complaining that it's hard. Go play something else. Yeah. Like, or or, or be better. Like, better yourself. <laughs> get good. Better no, yourself. But it's true. No, get, get stronger. Yeah. Get, get more resilient. Yeah. Like, hardship makes you better. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you... If you if you found the game too hard, and you and you took the time to write a negative review, mm. just just to exclamate how much of a bitch you are, you, <laughs> like, dude, uh, I I don't know if how upset I am about it is coming across, like utter. I don't I don't consider you people, like, <laughs> like <laughs> dude, I don't I. I take away all your rights, dude. Like you're nothing to me. Like uh, right. if you found it too hard, that's fine. Just don't play it. Okay. Yeah. You don't but yeah. if you if you took the time to write a review a review saying it's too hard, brother. No. Yeah. This this is the thing that, that I'll go back problem. to. You are the yeah. problem. I it is it's meant to be hard, but I do not think at any stage the shadow of the earth tree gets unfair. Right? <laughs> like I fought I've played games and I've fought bosses before. I'm like, what they're doing right now is not fair. It's bull crap. But never did I feel that way with Shadow of the Earth Tree. If I encountered a boss that was hard and I kept dying, which happens, of course, because it is meant to be a very hard DLC, Mm -hmm. you learn, you change your build, and you get better. And if you Mm want to suck it up, and and, because there was one boss fight, and I won't mention which one it was. I completed the whole game without using, or the whole expansion without using any spirits or any summons. 
I had to use one for this one particular boss fight, but it's in the game. Like they, they <laughs> honestly, there's there's an argument there that they've balanced this <laughs> DLC with the use of summons in mind. I know you're laughing, but it's true. Yeah, you're a bitch. <laughs> hey, Rob, I'm not. Th- let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you something. So, I played the game. Um, there was a three hour uh, gameplay session. I flew over to Sydney for right, and one of the bosses in there had no summons like you know how you can sometimes have set npc summons before you enter there was mm-hmm. none as you would enter the boss arena playing the the release version that we got or the review version there were two and i think they understood that people and, and people that were playing the previews were dying a lot to that one boss so they added in the two npc summons so they're there for you to use if you can't do it on your own then use them at least they're providing you that option but then you well, have people like Rob that say you're a bitch. <laughs> no, and, and and let me let me let me preface right. Like, yeah. I am not a god at these sort of games. I'm I, yeah. whilst I love hard games and permadeath and kind of look down on anyone that doesn't play like that. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I I am a victim like everybody else. There are some yeah. games I have had to come to terms with. That I'm just too shit to play. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, and I'm happy, like, but I'll I'll die on my sh- on my on my shield, like sort of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll I'll just suck it up and take the criticism like everybody else, because I understand you live and die by the sword, right? Yeah. Um, but in terms of Elden Ring, like the, you have the you have the bell of summoning, don't you? Like you can just yeah. summon. There are so many summons that are just stupid strong, like stupid strong. Mimic tier so being level- one of the top ones. Yeah. Yeah. Like they like mimic tier and then like there's heaps of like niche ones you can play that are just fun to use. Like, yep. I don't know. There's, the game, the game's not hard, especially if you just go on Google and you, you, you play like a min max build. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the, no, honestly, dude, it's all about the builds. Like me, yeah. and obvi- th- there, is an, there is an aspect with Shadow of the Earth Tree, you have to pick up these things called Shadow Tree Fragments or Shadow Tree Fragments, and they make it easier for you to take damage and also let you dish out more damage specifically in that area. So there is a level of you need to make sure you explore and pick up all those things to be as powerful mm. as possible before you take on the harder bosses. If you're walking mm. straight to the boss fights without picking up any of those things, you're going to get your ass handed to you. But that's intentional. Let your like level up all that stuff. But also, you would probably have to to change your build around. You can't go into some of these bosses with a crap build, and nor should you. Like that's not how the game is meant to be played. You're meant to be changing and experimenting. Pick up a min max build. Look up a YouTube guide. There's plenty of I'm builds out there that can help you out. To my new playthrough, mm. um, I'm gonna go just pure sword and board quality. Okay. Like, and I'm gonna. It's gonna make the game a nightmare. <laughs> you are a sucker for punishment, bro. I cannot Genuinely, wait. you like, are. <laughs> I'm either going to become a parry god or end up quitting the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm playing. Sword and ball quality. Like I just, I can't wait. I cannot wait, yeah. dude. I'm looking forward to seeing you, what you think. You, in, in you the know next what I'm tempted episode. to download is like a hardcore mode. Don't. Mode you don't need that. It's hard enough as it is. You don't. I just feel like it would just. Don't you get like a you, a tingle in your balls when you're about to lose a character of about twenty hours, mate? Like, no. I think no. I think there is like I am slowly developing like a bad massachusetts sort of <laughs> personality Dude, with gaming. I could not imagine oh. getting to the DLC Shadow of the Earth Tree after playing through the whole base game and dying to one of those bosses and losing my yeah. character. That's that's well, that would be a horrible I'm, I'm sinking. So feeling. interested in it, but no, don't. Like, do and it, I guess like we'll transition that onto what we've been, what I've been playing, watching, and stuff. Because yeah. I've been just smashing. So the whole two weeks I was away, yeah. I was thrashing Monster Hunter World. Oh yeah, thrashing it. And dude, some of those end game bosses are stupid. <laughs> like there is nothing worse, bro, than spending thirty five minutes trying to kill something only to cut three times by the end, like only to lose the yeah. fight. Like there is n- – like I, I, I kid you not, like 40-minute fights, 40-minute fights. That's insane. To just die that's, and have to start again. Like That's insane. Yeah. But I why was, though? Are they just like they, – they have so much health? Like what's why is they, it like They that? have a ton of health and they're just hard to fight. They're just like – 
you have to be on because they hit so freaking hard and nah. they have a ton of health, a ton of health. I, that's like, why I prefer and, Elden Ring. The and Elden there's Ring. a, like the the combat style is very skill-based. Like there's a lot of combos mm. you need to know, a lot of positioning. So there's no, you can't really, it doesn't have a dodge roll mechanic. It does have a dodge roll mechanic, but the iframes are minuscule. So you can't use it defensively that well. Right. You right. more you more use it as a positioning mechanism. Right, mm. so it's it kind of like it takes a while to get adjusted, that, especially if you've come from a game like Elden Ring or Dark Souls to get used yeah. to that sort of thing. But yeah, it it gets hard as shit. <laughs> Couldn't do it, man. Not not forty Fine, minute boss fights. Like the the thing that I like about Elden Ring is that if you die a lot, you're dying a lot in maybe one to two three minute boss fights you know what i mean yep. so you can keep trying and trying and trying very quickly 40 minutes that i i would just log off for the night if i died yeah that no way that's kind of why i'm burnt out now so i'm not i'm not playing it right now yeah like i got like 200 hours on my character or something but yeah i'm not playing any i'm not playing anymore because i just don't ah oh, the idea because sometimes you got to do the same boss multiple times to farm items to build the uh. thing you want and I just don't have it in me to keep hitting the same 30 minute boss over and over no. and over. Like, not anymore anyway. Like I, like I said, I spent, I was spending like eight hours a day every day with me mate playing it um, when I was Shit. in Dubai. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I was playing so much. <laughs> and it, it was, it was a great ride, but I'm, I'm burnt out. I'm going to, I'm going to put it down for a bit. That's why UFC can't do embedded with you, bro. Because all you're doing is sitting and playing video games. <laughs> I kid you not. They call me up and they're like, bro, you doing anything today? And I say, nah. You know what I did yesterday? I'm doing that today too. And they're like, no worries. Let me know if you go out anywhere. That's why they don't get any footage ever. They hate me. That's so funny. I tell you what, though, uh, touching on that, I watched the ESPN uh, video breakdown of Ikram and you before your fight. That was pretty fantastic, man. That was cool. They, they came to your place and they recorded you and your family. I thought that was really sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember seeing that, like the the clip with my kids and stuff and it was like it's the best. Like, yeah. Yeah. Best. Yeah, hell yeah. Are you, were you playing anything else, by the way, when you were in Dubai? No, just Monster Hunter World. But like, there's so many things I want to get into now. So, like, mm. right, I was talking to you just before this. Like, oh, as much as I want to play Shadow of the Earth Tree, I'm really itching for Dragon's Dogma 2. I want to make a sword and board, dude. Like, just wow, pure okay. Sword You're going to go back board. and play it. Yep. 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 Just sword and board. Just going to start again. Sword and board yep. only. Become a parry god. Okay. I don't know why. Like, that's how I am. Like, if I decide I want to play a certain build, <laughs> I go through all my games, remaking characters of that build. Like so, Dragon's Dogma. Now I'm gonna go play that. Wait, so are you gonna play Dragon's Dogma two before Shadow of the Earth Tree? Yeah, that's cr- right. that's wild, Off bro. This. Every I just don't. Everyone thought you were feel playing. Like playing. Yeah, I just Fair don't enough. feel like it right now. Like I'm a flavors of the month, dude. You know what I mean? Like Fair I want enough. to. I really want to get in the Dragon's Dogma two and just sword and board things. I want to go parry ogres and just smash all it. Right. Like, <laughs> all right that's crazy and then, man and in saying that there's also like case of cud released a massive ui update and i'm so keen to jump back into that but after yeah. dragon's dogma i reckon fair enough fair you enough know? and then oh man and then dwarf's fortress is dropping adventure mode they've dropped the adventure <laughs> mode beta and that like uh, the full version of that's coming out in a couple of months and that's wild as well like there's so much to do and then oh man i want to make a new run in cyberpunk i still haven't even started Phantom Liberty. I, I want to do that as well. That's that's definitely like, on my list for sure. And then there's the Shadow of the Earth Tree, you know? So mm. like, but think yeah. about this. Think about this. Like if I play my backlog of games that I want to play now, mm. I'll have Shadow of the Earth Tree to play when I'm ready. So I've got that in my back pocket, dude. Like, True. You know what I mean? I, so just, like, I, I think it's wild that you just don't want to play it now, given how good it is. Yeah, but like, I just don't feel like it. <laughs> fair enough fair enough man because that's that's all i've been doing speaking about what i've been playing last last few yeah. weeks have just been shadow of the earth tree exploring defeating the bosses man it's been yeah. a hell of a lot of fun like they absolutely nailed it man don't yeah. don't take any stock of the mixed reviews on steam it's hard but it's meant to be the exploration yeah. is more right. satisfying than in the base game the side quests are fantastic <laughs> and all the law implications as well Ah, oh, yeah. I don't want to spoil it. Listen, boy. yeah, and listen to me. Hardship makes the triumph 
hardship makes the triumph. Like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's good for you. It's good for yeah, you. Yeah, like, for sure. The harder it is, the better, it, the, 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 the tastier the, the victory, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that is what we've been watching playing and reading of course the last segment as always viewer questions if you have any viewer questions let us know in the comments below we're going to be starting off with a member on the channel thank you to Dane and Eddie or Eddie to, for becoming a member first one Rob and I wanted to ask you this as well I'm very curious quote also Rob what did you think of the new gloves some say they're cursed because there's been no KOs but you help break the, break the curse what did you think of the new USC gloves? Are they good? Uh, not really. I don't really like them very much. Really? But, Why? Yeah. Because they just they feel crap. <laughs> In what <laughs> way? What, what, do you, what do you mean? Uh, I can't explain. They, they, they're just not as comfortable. Like I need to wear mm. a size up as well because I think they're a smaller fit. Um, yeah, that's... Kind of it. Is it the but, material or the shape or combination? Yeah, of the both? material feels different. The shape feels different. It just I just don't like it. I just don't like mm. it. UFC gloves had like a unique feel. These ones kind of feel more mainstream. I don't like it very much. Right. But nobody asked me. <laughs> but that being said, man, all right, you got your knockout with it. Maybe maybe this is something to it, right? I, I, I've been told that there's less material. Yeah, maybe well they are they are technically lighter. Well, there you go. So maybe you, you're going to get some good luck with them. I'm just saying, maybe. but it's interesting to know that that you don't really like them. Mm -hmm. Next up, we've got at Pinpad Prompts. Can you ask Rob on the next pod whether that uppercut was a shot he saw in the Kamsad fight or was it just something he threw in the moment? Yeah, I think you've answered that already beforehand. Answered that I think one, that's mate. funny, bro. <laughs> <laughs> next up, we've got at HM Cars SOA. Great win for Rob and loved how the channel was run this month. Thank you, man. Uh, here are some random questions for the podcast. For Johnny, what is your most difficult moment in gaming, e.g. hardest boss? And for Rob, I know they're completely different scenarios, but do you take any of your experiences in MMA into gaming, e.g. somehow applying uh, your ring IQ into a difficult boss fight, etc.? Rob, we'll start with I you. Was, yeah, I was thinking about this, okay? Mm. I was thinking about this because, like I said just a second ago, I was putting like eight hours a day in the Monster Hunter world. <laughs> I feel like my brain is geared, like after playing that much Monster Hunter, in trying to look at boss patterns, trying to find openings for punishment, trying mm. to avoid positional damage. Like I feel like my mind is geared to looking at an obstacle and uh, dissecting it in such a way that I can start to find advantages. Mm. Okay, and that's exactly what I did in the fight as well. Within a minute of the fight, I saw he was just left that left arm out. He was using that very defensively, going yeah. backwards. He was giving me the tell and the reads, and then I went in and exploited that. I don't – how much of that is true? Who knows? But it was something I thought about in the week leading into it. And, um, mm. yeah, like I, I definitely attribute to how I fight mechanically or even just my approach in life – to video games a big deal because yeah. my brain is geared differently. Like Dude, there's my, my absolutely been studies that have shown yeah. people that play games consistently have better reaction time and and stuff like that. So I believe it. I believe it. And and yeah. that means yeah. you need to add in video games to your to your training regime. Eight hours right. a day, shadow the earth trio monster hunter. <laughs> Dude, you, you don't see it. Like I played so many games when I was away. I had to get massaged to fix my back because the chair was crap. Like I was getting, I was getting massaged just to keep me gaming, man. Like That's so funny, my priorities man. got blended. <laughs> you saying that is just wild, knowing what you did against against um against Ikram. But to answer the question for me, honestly, man, after playing Shadow of the Earth Tree, I won't name the boss, but the end boss in Shadow of the Earth Tree is genuinely the hardest boss that I've ever fought. Genuinely, it's it's not in their difference. Can can I ask you something? Have yes. you fought the Nameless King in Dark Souls 3? No. No, I haven't. But I, like, I haven't played that many games, like I, being, being honest. Because that made me like reassess who I was as a person. That was bullshit. That's the first game. Okay. The first game, the first boss, I actually stopped playing the game. Wow. Yeah. Like I okay. for, for a good good eight months year. I, I stopped and then came back to it and started again and had much more success when nice. I matured a little bit. But 
yeah, <laughs> Look, if, if I had played it, I probably would agree with you, but at least for the games that I played, oh. definitely that one boss from Shadow of the Earth Tree. Bro, have you played Terraria? No, I haven't played Terraria. Oh, bro. Empress, I don't play the games em- you play, but Empress, <laughs> Empress of Light in Master Mode in Terraria, <laughs> when you're trying to get her special weapon, like you're trying to fight her during the day and she can one shot you, bro. That's that crazy. Was, that's, that's crazy. Next, next level hard. People in the comments, back me up here. That's next level stupid hard. That was bull crap. That's bull ridiculous. Crap. That is ridiculous. Um, yeah. Next question is from at Ch- Cheese Nips nine two nine four. Jesus Christ. Does Rob live stream regularly? If so, what account does he use? I found his Twitch and YouTube, but he hasn't used them in years. Rob, what are you doing? You live streaming? What's going on? No, nah, the the only thing that I'm doing online is the podcast Emma Arcade. You can find yeah. us on YouTube. Please subscribe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's it. Like if, if and I think moving forward, if I do stream mm. uh, or anything, it'll be through this channel. So, yeah, um, you're in the right place. <laughs> oh yeah. And the last question, I'm very curious about this question. And I was thought I thought about doing a separate video on it, but at Jody Whammer, if Hamza comes back, where does he sit as far as a title contender fight? Do you want to answer this first, or should I? Mate, I, it's not something I've thought about because um, obviously he he had his chance and mm-hmm. he missed it. But like I said, I'm not one to pick fights. I'm going to speak to the UFC. We're going to come. We're going to talk. We're going to throw around some ideas and see what happens. Yeah, fair. I mean, for me, he still hasn't beat a, an actual middleweight yet. He beat mm-hmm. a Kamara Usman who moved up on short notice, and it wasn't that convincing of a win. He needs mm-hmm. to find an actual middleweight. At, at least, I would like to see at least two fights before we even talk about title contention. And it was meant to be you, and it didn't happen. Through He got sick. I can understand that, but that doesn't mean he just gets to walk into a title shot, especially when you and Sean Strickland both have legitimate claims. So he needs, in my eyes, I would like to see two fights from him in middleweight. UFC is probably going to give him one, but let's see what happens. Maybe maybe him mm-hmm. against Nasadine Imavov. I think they, mm-hmm. that could be a good fight. But Rob, that is episode 44 of the MMR Cade podcast. Do you have any closing right. thoughts before we end it up? That is a solid comeback episode. Like, it is. It is. You know, I think I think that's a really solid comeback. I want to say thank you to everyone. I want to thank thank yourself for keeping the the cast you, alive bro. while I was um busy, you know, overseas and everything. I want to thank yeah. all the subscribers and all the fans for for jumping on and you know, watching all the videos, staying tuned, you know, being a part. You guys fuel this podcast. So if you can, if you aren't subscribed, please sub and, yeah, tell your mates about it. And we're back. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Take care.